44 News at 9. Good evening and thank you for joining us on Fox 44 News at 9. I'm Kendall Green. Adam Hooper has the night off. The candidates vying for Bill Flores' seat in the 17th Congressional District are weighing in on the congressional investigation into Fort Hood. Fox 44's Cameron Stewart is live in the studio now after talking to the candidates today. Cameron, what are they thinking about this investigation? Well, Kendall, these two candidates have a vested interest because in a few months' time, one of them could actually be a part of the process. With Congress announcing they're stepping in to take a look at Fort Hood, these two actually found something they could agree on. This is an investigation. It's not a prosecution. Democrat Rick Kennedy and Republican Pete Sessions both agree the congressional review of Fort Hood was the right call. We should be doing active investigations uh, all the time. Sessions has served 11 terms in Congress representing two districts in Texas and knows what to expect from the kinds of investigations like the one going on at Fort Hood. Well, we can't prosecute anybody, but we can bring to light and hold people accountable for the actions. And then I would anticipate as a result of that, there would then be an official congressional hearing where those witnesses and the facts of the case would then be borne out for the public. The Democratic candidate for the 17th District, Rick Kennedy, would use his business tactics as a way to analyze the post, which has had 28 soldier deaths this year, nine of which came under suspicious circumstances. He believes the issue could lie in the culture at Fort Hood. In the business world, I'm always looking for systemic changes that we can make to, to better our processes in the business world. I would approach this the same way. I'd be looking for maybe changes in training and regulations or procedures um, that we could put in place to, again, better uh, you know, assure our men and women in the armed forces of their safety. Of course, both candidates feel they could help Congress with this investigation by representing the 17th District. Central Texans, Texans in general take a great deal of pride in our armed forces. And I would do everything in my power in that office to make sure all of those situations remain that way. The ability that we have to make sure that we're safe here and that we're treating people properly, also that we would not allow criminal behavior is important in Texas. So. I, I think that my support will be important, and I intend to do that. Coming up at 9.30, hear how both candidates feel about the idea of shutting down Fort Hood entirely. Live in the studio, I'm Cameron Stewart, Fox 44 News. Thanks, Cameron. Tomorrow marks 19 years since the September 11th attacks. On that day, terrorists killed nearly 3,000 Americans by flying planes into the World Trade Center, the Pentagon, and a field in Pen Pennsylvania. Fox 44 Shaquille Omar spoke with one survivor who now lives in Waco. Hector Castro spent 20 years in the U.S. Army, but as a young man, he started working as a volunteer EMT in Queens, New York. On September 11, 2001, he recalls the attack being one of the most horrifying moments of his life. It was like, I would say, the worst thing that I've ever seen. Hector Castro vividly remembers September 11, 2001. Hearing the screams for help, and it was coming from all directions. Castro worked as a volunteer EMT in Queens, New York. On his day off, he turned on the TV. 110 stories high, no word yet of any injuries or deaths, but... And witnessed heavy smoke coming from one of the towers. I thought it was just a movie or something on TV. Minutes later, he received a call from his unit, ordering him to rip the towers. A moment that changed his life. Being a first responder, my thought was that I could do anything when it comes to helping people out and saving lives. 9-11 was a wake-up call. Emergency crews rushed to save those stuck in the rubble. Went into like rescue mode, I'll call it that, and just started grabbing people and pulling them out. The 54-year-old says then a plane hit the second tower triggering more falling debris. That's when a firefighter pushed him inside a firehouse to safety. I would love to see that firefighter again. And I wanted to thank him for saving my life. But uh, it's been several years that I'd be thinking is why all those people that had died and as close as I was, how come I'm not with them? As September 11th memorials air on TV, they bring up mixed emotions for Castro. Sometimes I try to avoid those memories, so I really haven't been watching it since I left New York. 
But the Army veteran pays his respects in other ways with this makeshift Twin Tower replica outside his home. My work, my tribute to the people that died in 9-11. He's now grateful for his life. I had people tell me it was God's will. God has a purpose. Okay? And if you're still here, it's because it's a purpose. There's a reason why I'm still here. Castro says he suffers from PTSD and sometimes forgets events that happened on that tragic day. He now receives treatment through the VA hospital. In the studio, Shaquille Omari, Fox 44 News. Tomorrow, the Young Conservatives of Texas chapter at the University of Mary Hardin Baylor will be setting up a flag memorial in honor of 9-11. The group will be planting nearly 3,000 flags on campus, a flag for every life lost on that tragic day in 2001. The memorial will be at Luther Memorial on campus and will be up all day long. And nationwide, Reeds Across America is calling for Americans to stand outside and wave their flags on the anniversary. Americans are called to wave their flags for one minute at 846, 903, 937, and 1003, the times of when four planes crashed. Participants are encouraged to take video and pictures of their participation in the national flag waving and share them with Reefs Across America, their family, and their friends using hashtags flags across the country and America strong. Midway ISD emailing parents, letting them know three more high school students have tested positive and the parents of the students who have been in close contact with the infected individuals will be notified. McLennan County adding 109 cases to the total count today. There are now nearly 7,000 confirmed cases in the county with about 540 active cases. Now, Bell County reporting 13 new cases. The county inches closer to 1,000, 5,000 cases. Over 4,500 residents have recovered. There are currently 257 active coronavirus cases in the Baylor community. In the last seven days, 1,600 tests have been administered, making Baylor's positivity rate 4.6 percent. Since August 1st, Baylor has had over 900 positive cases. A Texas teacher union has developed a website they hope will track COVID-19 cases in schools across the state. The state American Federation of Teachers unveiled Stop the Spread TX School. It uses crowdsourced information submitted by teachers, staff, and parents to share data about COVID-19. The data can be broken down by school campuses, and organizers aim to share that information in real time. So we're looking for actual data, actual information to back that up, and it could be could be a news article that came through that maybe we've missed. It could be a letter that they've received from HR or their principal that is notifying them that there was a, a, a positive case on their particular campus. Now, the Texas Education Agency and the Department of State Health Services announced last month that the state would publicly report COVID-19 cases in school districts. Representatives from both agencies told us they expect the first weekly report to be made available by the end of next week. Also, trials are underway in hopes of finding a vaccine to end the COVID-19 pandemic. We'll tell you the latest in the race for the vaccine. And Bell Mead Police make an arrest after a custody exchange ends in gun battle. We'll break that down. What happened? This 